Brothers, now we're on top of a hill. This is not the mountain of Uhud. The mountain of Uhud is over there. So now I'm going to take you to this battle. Let me stand up, inshallah. Now I'm going to take you to this battle. <clears throat> this battle happened because the people of Quraysh in Mecca, when they heard about the humiliating defeat that they lost, they gathered an army that was greater, bigger, and they said, we're going to take revenge from Muhammad. We're going to take revenge from these Muslims. We're going to go into their house. We're going to take their women and children. So they brought the battlefield to Medina, where we were in the masjid. That's where the Prophet lived. He lived here with his wives. His children were there, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. His companions, their wives and their children were there. That's where their homes were. So this battle is not an, like any other battle. Where if at the end of the day, if you lose, it's just you who loses. But here, if you lose, all of your women are going to go slaves. Your daughters are going to be sold. They're going to be taken and they're going to be violated. So this battle, it had serious significance. The Muslims, they couldn't lose. They couldn't lose. Because if they did, they would lose their city. So they brought the fight right here. But the Muslims, as you can imagine, they just beat the disbelievers when they were outnumbered three to one. And in this battle, they were still outnumbered, but they were better. They were in a better situation than in the Battle of Badr. So they were confident. They said, no problem. Come through. We'll see what time it is. And when they came, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a military strategist. Kuffar have written books on the Prophet's military strategy. Generals of European armies, they studied the Prophet and they looked at his military tactics because he was a genius in the way he conducted warfare. The way he was a genius in the which he conducted the economical and social situation of the people as well. But now because we're talking about warfare, let's stick to the topic. He positioned some people from his army who had bows and arrows right here. Right here. Why do you think he did that? Who played Call of Duty? Put your hands up. A sniper does what? You go to a high point so you can see far. That way anyone who's trying to come close from far, you lick him down. So you don't let him get close to your people, right? So the Prophet, he did this. The people who had bows and arrows, the archers, they were that day what are snipers to us. So the Prophet placed them on this high point. Because he understood that the army of the disbelievers can come and attack from behind. So he wanted to place these soldiers at the top to guard the Muslims such that they couldn't come and attack him from behind. You guys can hear me, yeah? He wanted to place an army so they don't come and attack from behind. So when they're fighting them in front, these guys here can watch from the back. Now when they did that, the Prophet told them, don't get off, don't get off this hill. No matter what happens, don't climb down. Even if you see crows, Pecking at our dead corpses. Don't cut. You want to help this boy? You okay? MashaAllah. <laughs> the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, He said, even if you see crows pecking at our dead corpses, do not come off this hill. Look at that command, it's clear. The Prophet said, I do not want to be disobeyed in this. Do not argue, do not question. We're in war. Do not come off this hill. So they said, No problem. And the Prophet placed one of them in charge. When the battle started, the Muslims started to win again. They're pressing forward on the enemy and the kuffar look like they're about to run away one more time. But the people who are on this hill, may Allah be pleased with those companions, they made a mistake. They made a mistake, you know what they did? They thought the battle was over. So they ran off the hill. Some of them said, no, don't go. The Prophet told us, don't leave this place. But others said, no, look at them, they're going back. And we are not going to get the spoils of war if we stay here. So they ran off the mountain. What did they do? They disobeyed the messenger. When they disobeyed the messenger, the disbelievers, they saw that these snipers, these archers, they got off. So Khalid ibn Walid at the time, who was not a Muslim, he took a part of the cavalry on horses and he took them round and they attacked the Muslims from the back. And now the Muslims had an army in the front and an army from the back. And they were like sandwiched in the middle. So when that happened, what happens? You retreat, right? The smart thing to do is get off the battlefield. So they did. But in that process, 70 noble companions got killed that day. Right there, you see that graveyard? That is a graveyard where 70 of the greatest men who ever walked the planet Earth are buried. From them is Hamza radiallahu anhu, who was what? The greatest mujahid. 
and Musab ibn Umayr radiallahu anhu, brothers, pay attention, because we've got some sweet boys amongst us. Pay attention. Musab ibn Umayr radiallahu anhu is what you would have said he was a sweet boy in Mecca. He had the nicest garments and the most beautiful perfume. They would say if he came to a place and he left, if he came to a place and he left, you'd know he was there because of the smell of his fragrance. He was loved, everyone loved him. He was the golden boy of Mecca. But when he became Muslim, his family abandoned him and left him, he had nothing. When he died in the battle of Uhud here, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam brought a white sheet to shroud him with. But the sheet was so small that when they tried to cover his head, his feet would be exposed. And when they tried to cover his feet, his head would be exposed. Look at what he died with. He didn't even have a white sheet to shroud him properly. They gave everything up for Allah's sake. And they literally had everything before. But what Allah gave them was better. He died as a shaheed. He's buried right there. And inshallah, he's going to be from the foremost in paradise. In fact, we don't need to say inshallah because we know he is. Textual proof stipulates this. These men, they gave up everything for their religion. But coming back to the story, the overall point is that the Muslims, they lost or they started to lose. So when they started to lose, the kuffar, they came and they attacked the Prophet. They attacked him on his head. And the armor from the Prophet's head, it actually went into his, it went into him. It was stuck into him. And because of it, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he lost two of his teeth. And his blessed blood, it spilt that day. And they started to say, we killed Muhammad. They said, we killed him. So the Sahaba, when they heard the Prophet was in danger, even though they were running off for their life, they ran back to the battlefield. We can't leave our Prophet. We can't leave the Messenger of Allah. Look at what they gave up for his sake, for Allah's sake. There was a man called Talha, Abu Talha radiallahu anhu. Brothers, these were hard men. These were real men. He saw that the Prophet doesn't have armor. So he took his body, and he made his body a human shield for the Prophet. If the Prophet moved right, he would move right. If the Prophet moved left, he would move left. So suddenly they started to throw arrows at the Prophet. And he stood in front of the Prophet like this. And he did not drop until 60 arrows landed in his chest. He took 60 arrows, 60 bullets for the Prophet. A man called Nu'mad ibn Qatada radiallahu anhu. He noticed Abu Talha, he's guarding the Prophet's body. But who's guarding the Prophet's head? Who's protecting his head? So he took his head and he placed it in front of the Prophet's head. If the Prophet moved right, he'd move right. If the Prophet moved left, he moved left. If the Prophet went back, he went back with him. Until an arrow came and it struck him in his eye. And it took his eye out. And then he came to the Prophet, look what he said. He said, oh Messenger of Allah, my eye is in my hand. What shall I do? He's not saying, I want to run away. He wants to carry on, but he's saying, what do I do? My eyes in my hand. So from the miracle that Allah gave to the Prophet, the Prophet, he put his saliva on his eye, but he put it back in his socket. He said, go back and fight. And he went back in there and he fought, defending the Muslims. Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas radiallahu anhu. Again, a young companion. The Prophet was picking up arrows and passing it to him. And Sa'ad was just shooting, firing arrow after arrow after arrow. One man. One man was firing in such a way that the entire army of 2,000 people couldn't even come close to the Prophet And the Prophet would say, shoot, shoot Sa'ad. May my mother and my father be sacrificed for you. I give you an example of a woman because there's some women amongst us. There was a woman called Nusayba radiallahu anha. She didn't even come to fight. When she saw the men running off the battlefield, she said, give me your shield. Give it to one who's fighting. Meaning I'm going to fight. You're going to run off. I'm a woman. I'm going to fight. And she went into the battlefield. Brothers, this is a woman. And she started to defend the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet said, everywhere I looked that day, I saw Nusayba. Everywhere she was fighting, she was in front of me. I saw her. And in the middle of the battlefield, she asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, can I be with you in paradise? I want to be with you, O messenger of Allah in Jannah. And the Prophet made dua for her in the battlefield. And she was fighting that day. She took wounds. 
She got sliced for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Even her son got attacked in the battlefield. She went up to her son, she patched up his wound. She didn't say, oh my little son, get off. She said, go back in there and fight. Go back in there and defend the Muslims. That's what these people were like. And that day, even though they lost the battle, it wasn't a total loss. Because those companions who came back, when they came back, they saved the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they went back home that day. And when they came back, they came back harder and stronger. What's the message I want to take away from this? The companions at the end of the battle, they were confused, my brothers. They were confused. Are you hearing me? They said, how could we lose? Anna laki hada. How did we lose today? Allah, you gave us victory in Badr. And not only that, we've got the messenger with us. And we worship you, Allah. We're your slaves. But why did we lose today? Allah said, Allah said, the reason you lost is because you disobeyed the messenger. Why did you not obey him? When he told you, don't come off the hill, why did you disobey him? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah was trying to teach a lesson to the Muslims that day. You only won in Badr because you were obedient. And when you became disobedient, Allah, he gave you loss. And if you obey him again, Allah will lift you up. The Sahaba didn't argue, they took it, they understood. This is our mistake. This is our wrongdoing. Do you get upset when you hear they make cartoons about the Prophet? Do you get upset when they make cartoons? Does it not make your blood boil? Does it not make you cry? I know brothers who cry when they hear the way they insult the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Do you think they have the audacity to insult him? Never. Never did they have the audacity to insult him. There was a man who, wrote, who made a cartoon about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the early 1900s, in the early part of the, latter, the previous century. And the British government sent a letter to the newspaper saying, shut this down. Are you mad? These Muslims, these Ottomans, these Muslims, they're going to come in and finish us. You can't make fun of their Prophet. You can't do that. They shut their own boy down. But why is it that they can do it today? The reason they can do it today is because we're weak. Why are we weak? Because of our sins. We disobey Allah. We disobey His Messenger again and again. And we wonder why our blood is cheap. We wonder why our kids get taken. Our women get raped. We wonder why. It's because we as Muslims, we became weak. Because we disobeyed Allah and His Messenger. So next time you get upset when the Prophet gets insulted, know that he only became insulted and got attacked because of your and my sin. The same way on that day here, many years ago, when the Prophet got struck in the head, he only got struck in the head because his own companions disobeyed him. It's the disobedience that caused him to be harmed that day and it's our disobedience today that caused him to be harmed today. Like in Brothers, when the companions changed it around and they repented, Allah gave them victory after victory until they conquered. Pay attention. The messenger never got to see this because he died, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But they conquered and they conquered until Allah gave them the footsteps of China in the east to the shores of Spain in the west. Even up north they went and they conquered up to southern France. And European historians write that the entirety of the European armies and kings had to come together to fight the Muslims. They all had to come together, one army, one battle to fight them. And Allah gave them this victory. Why? Because they submitted to him. The battle of Badr, they won because they were obedient. Uhud, they lost because they disobeyed. When they obeyed again, they conquered the world. Allah can give it to you again. You might not have aspirations to see Islam reign supreme one more day, even though you should. But the very least that I'm sure you have is that you want to see yourself successful in this world. And you want to see yourself successful in the next life. Brothers, it's in the obedience of Allah Azza wa Jal. It's in the obedience of Allah Azza wa Jal and the Sunnah of His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So brothers, right now, I want us to take an action point. The action point is I want you to repent to Allah. And I'm going to join you in this repentance. I'm going to ask Allah to forgive me as well. Look, we amongst us here, we came because we want our sins to be washed away. And Allah is not one who is heedless when his slaves call out to him. Allah is one who is very merciful. Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, look what he said. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said the people who do shirk, they worship idols and they murder people unjustly and they fornicate. They take the honor of women and they own honor, they violate themselves. Allah said these people, Allah is going to humiliate them and punishment them, punish them. On the day of judgment, Allah, he said he's going to multiply their punishment. But then Allah gives an exception. Allah said, Illa man tab. Even though you murdered and you might have worshipped besides Allah and you fornicated, Allah said, Allah will not destroy you if you repent. Illa man tab. Wa'amana and you believe. The belief of Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah. The belief of the Salaf al Salih. If you come with that Iman, Wa'amila Amalan Salihan. Then you do actions which are righteous. Brothers, pay attention. This is what Allah wants from you right now. Repent, believe, and start doing good deeds. Wallahi, I'm looking at all of you right now. And I don't see one of you except that he came here and he started to do righteous actions. And you're a believer and you've been repenting every night. So every single one of you, inshallah, I am confident that right here, right now, you are who Allah is talking about. Allah said Allah will destroy them except when they repent, believe and do righteous actions. Allah didn't say He's going to forgive them. Allah said, Allah said Allah will exchange, pay attention, the murder, the fornication, the theft, the violence, the lies, the disrespect, the backbiting, any sin that they've done, Allah said Allah will exchange it for good deeds. You went to the currency exchange, right? Because you had pounds and you wanted real. You wanted to change currency, right? This is how you currency exchange with Allah Azza wa Jal. You give Allah subhan the currency that the believers work with is good deeds. So you have all of these sins. Look right now, we're carrying these sins on our shoulders. You raise your hand and say, Allah, I'm sorry. You say, Allah, forgive me. Allah was wrong. Allah was disobedient. I was heedless, but now you guided me. I'm asking you, Allah, forgive me. Allah will take every last sin. Allah will exchange it with good deeds. Imam Ibn Qayyim said, Allah doesn't take one sin and give you one good deed. No, for every one sin, Allah gives you so many good deeds. So you walk away, you ain't done nothing in your life except that you acknowledge you were wrong and you say, Allah, I'm sorry, ready to change. Based on that, Allah made you better and gave you more deeds than someone who might not have ever sinned in his life. Someone who might not have done nothing. You might have done worse than him. But because you acknowledge you were wrong and you came running back to Allah, Allah, he gave you a status that's higher than the one you never sinned right now because your deeds are heavier than them. So I ask you brothers, repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter how big your sin is, remember the mercy of Allah is greater. So now inshallah ta'ala, I want you to take a moment, come off this hill and spend 10, 15 minutes to yourself, my brothers. On your phone, we all have phones, we have notepads, and if you don't, at least you have your memory. Write down three, of the most common and major sins that you're struggling with. Write them down. And then when you write them down, ask yourself, how are you going to fix this? If you're a guy who watches porn, you can't just say, I'm gonna stop watching porn now. You need to understand why do you watch porn? You have a laptop, you have a phone. You watch it every night when everyone's asleep at 1 a.m. in the morning. So you need to now say, I can't have a computer in my room. That's one of the things that makes me disobey Allah. I can't do this anymore. I need to put the computer in the living room where everyone can see. If you're a guy, you know, you smoke weed when your friends are around. You need to now know you can't be with these people no more. You can't be. If you're a guy, you know you got a girlfriend. You know a girl that you talk to. And you keep talking to her and having inappropriate conversations. I mean, talking to her is inappropriate in the first place. You now know I need to get rid of this girl. Or I need to make it halal ASAP. It's not just Allah, I'm sorry. You need to take action. So spend some private time now. Write down the things that you're struggling with and write down a plan for all of them. Brothers, I promise you, you might think to yourself, this is hard. You might think I don't have the ability to do this. Do you think Sahaba had the ability to leave their friends and family behind? This is what Iman does. Allah gives strength to your heart. And I pray Allah gives strength to your heart, allows you to leave every sin away. 
And I pray Allah, I'm looking at guys in front of me. Wallahi, I envy each and every single one of you. You know why? Because the majority of you, you started practicing before me. I'm a man, I became very old when I came and I started to worship Allah. Look at you guys. I envy you, each and every single one of you, Allah. You're all better than me. Don't look at me like I'm better than you. Wallahi, you can pace me. Like I've seen brothers who, who came to the religion one or two years ago and they're already ahead of me. Wallahi, I see so much in you. You think we were coming to Umrah when we were your age? But we didn't give a damn about Umrah. We weren't coming to Umrah. You guys, Wallahi, you're special. Look, it shocks me. We've got Brother Kamal with us. This brother became Muslim one month ago. Would you think he became Muslim a month ago? Look at him, Allah. There are Muslims that will struggle with the kind of intensity he's coming with. But Allah, man, look. Allah, he honors who he wills. Allah, he honors whom he wills. Brothers, I'm begging you right now, take this time out. Speak to Allah, communicate to him. Do it until you hear the iqam and then we'll pray in the masjid. Subhanaka Allah, wa bihamdika, shadu wa la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum. Brothers and sisters, as you guys may be aware, we do Umrah trips where we take brothers and we also take sisters, those who are not practicing, those who are on the streets, those who are on the, on the verge of losing their iman, some of them, and we take them on this Umrah trip and it functions as a spiritual rehabilitation and reformation for them. We're taking people that have spent over 10 years in jail. We're taking people who were involved in drug, uh, usage of drugs, selling drugs, um, criminal activity. But Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, these people, they change now. They change it and, do, and they do a 180. And not only that, some of them went on to study their religion, seek knowledge. And some of them are now starting to work towards, you know, after a while, starting to become positive figures in their community and getting other people off the streets and getting them involved in deed and knowledge and da'wah. But they can't afford it because either their money is haram or they just broke, they don't have the money, but they need this trip for their iman. Listen, it could be that these people, if you help send them, will help change their life, then you get the reward of sending them to Umrah and even the good that they do after, inshallah ta'ala. So if you could please donate at the link below generously so people like that can have an opportunity to change their life and have a second chance at life, inshallah ta'ala, we'll be truly grateful. I know they definitely would. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, will reward you in abundance. So please, if you want to come, ring the number below, inshallah ta'ala. And if you'd like to donate, hit the link below, inshallah ta'ala. Barakallahu feek. Assalamu alaikum.